In these videos, I'm going to be going through math, physics, and engineering practice problems. If you need help with any of your courses or you want access to extra practice problems, check out my website linked below. For this question, we've got a beam on a 45 degree angle with a rope coming off it at a 30 degree angle. The question says the system is in equilibrium. A mass of 112 kilograms hangs from the end of the uniform beam whose mass is 86 kilograms. So that uniform beam, that just tells us that the weight of the beam is gonna act right in the center. For part A, they want us to calculate the tension in the cable. And for part B, they want us to find the vector components of the force exerted on the beam by the hinge. This question looks a little confusing when we first get started here, but if we start with a good free body diagram, it'll make the rest of the question easier. I'm gonna start by drawing a line to represent the beam, and then a little circle on the left-hand side of the beam to represent the hinge. Once we've got that, then we can start adding our forces in there. We've got FG1, which is gonna be the weight of the beam, and then FG2, which is gonna be the weight hanging off the end of the beam. Then we've got the tension, which we know is gonna act in the same direction as the cable. And the last ones we need to add are gonna be the reaction forces at the pin. So since it's a pin joint, we know that it can't support a torque or a moment at that hinge, but it can support forces. So what I've done is I've drawn FX and FY to represent those force in the X direction and force in the Y direction at the pin. The last thing to sort out is gonna be these angles. So what we want is we want the angles between the forces and the beam. And then we also want an angle between the force and either the X or the Y coordinate. And that'll get us everything that we need to set up our equations. So let's start with the easy one first. On the right hand side of the beam, we've got a 45 degrees between the beam and the horizontal. So that means that FG1 and FG2 are both gonna have 45 degrees between that force and the beam. Then if we look at the left hand side, we've got to deal with that tension force. So we've got 30 degrees between the tension force and the horizontal, and that just comes from the Z shaped. So we're gonna match the same angle that's in that bottom left hand corner. Then let's look at the angle between the tension force and the beam. So if we look at that whole triangle, we've got 30 degrees in the left hand corner, and then right where it connects to the beam, we've got 45 degrees on the right hand side, and we know that there has to be 180 degrees for a straight line. So that means on that other side of the beam, that has to be 135 degrees. Then we also know that inside any triangle, all the angles have to add up to 180. So if we take 180 minus 30 minus 135, that gives us our 15 degrees. Now that we've got our free body diagram, we have to decide which equation we want to use first. So we could use the sum of forces in the x direction equal to zero, sum of forces in the y direction equal to zero, or the sum of torques about some point equal to zero. Now the way that's going to make this easiest is if we start with the sum of torques. Because remember that when you use sum of torques, you're allowed to pick a point on the beam. And any forces that go through that point are excluded from our equation. So if we just look at our free body diagram here, we have three unknowns. We don't know the FX, we don't know FY, and we don't know that tension force. So what that means is that if we do our sum of torques about point O, the bottom left-hand side of that beam, then FX and FY won't show up in our equation, and we'll be left with one equation, one unknown. We can just rearrange that equation and solve for what we don't know. So I'm going to take the sum of torques about point O, and I'm going to label counterclockwise as positive. Just keep in mind that you can use counterclockwise or clockwise as positive. It's not going to make a difference. As long as you're consistent throughout the problem, you'll get the right answer. Our equation for torque is going to be perpendicular force times distance. So if we take a look at FG1, we notice that that one's going in the clockwise direction. So that one's going to be negative. And then if we want that perpendicular force, we're going to have to take FG1 times sine 45. And then the distance is going to be half the length of that beam. So I've just put L over 2 there. And then FG2 is going to be the same. We're going to have to take sine 45 to get the perpendicular component of that force. But FG2 is acting at the full length of the beam, so we multiply that one by L. The last one's going to be the torque due to the tension. That one's going in the opposite direction. So since it's counterclockwise, we're going to say that one's positive. And then again, we have to take that perpendicular force. So we'll take T sine 15 and then the full length of the beam L and set that whole thing equal to zero. Now you'll notice that the length of the beam shows up in every term of this equation. So we can divide through by the length and just cancel it out. Then we can rearrange for our tension. 
and replace all of our FGs with mass times gravity. Once we've got that, we can plug in our numbers here. M1 is going to be the mass of the beam, 86 kilograms, and M2 is going to be the mass hanging off the end of the beam, 112 kilograms. Then we get our tension as 4,154 newtons. We can use sum of forces in the x direction and sum of forces in the y direction to find the vector components of the force exerted on the beam by the hinge. Now that we know the tension in the cable, for the sum of forces in the x direction, we're only going to have two forces. So we'll have Fx, which we're going to say is positive because we've drawn it going to the right. And then we'll have a portion of the tension, which is going to be negative because it's going to the left. So we'll have Fx minus T cos 30 equal to zero. Then we can rearrange for Fx, plug in our numbers, and we get that the x component of the force at that pin is 3,598 newtons. Now we can do the same thing in the y direction. So we got Fy, which is pointing upwards, so we'll call that one positive. And then we got Fg1 and Fg2, both going downwards, so those will be negative. Then the portion of the tension, which is in the y direction, is also going to be negative. So we'll say minus T sine 30. And then all of that will be equal to zero. Then we can rearrange for Fy and plug in our numbers. And we'll get that the y component of the pin force is 4,020 newtons. Since Fx and Fy both turned out as positive numbers, we know that we drew our forces in the right orientation in our free body diagram. Now the last step is just to put that force into vector notation. So we have that that force as a vector is going to be Fx in the i-hat direction plus Fy in the j-hat direction. So what we end up as our final answer is the force from the pin as a vector is going to be 3,598 newtons i-hat plus 4,020 newtons j-hat. So let's recap what we did here. For these static equilibrium type problems, the first step is always going to be to draw a good free body diagram. Once you have that, I encourage you to take a second and think about which equation you want to use first. It usually makes it easier if you do sum of torques first, because you can pick a point on your beam which will eliminate some of your unknowns. So what you end up with is one equation with one unknown. That's always the best case scenario because then you can just rearrange that equation and solve for what you don't know. That's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and I'll answer those as soon as I can.